Okay, thanks everyone. I uh, really look forward to presenting the material today uh, and also the tools that we have to go along with it uh, that customers and prospects can take advantage of um, in their day to day. We also have our uh, signal integrity experts on the line to answer any questions you may have um, after the presentation. So if there's any questions at all, you can always chat it in the Q&A section. Uh, and then you can also ask towards the end uh, of the presentation. So two sentences about Sierra. Uh, Sierra Circuits has been in the Bay Area for over 30 years and our main focus is to provide high technology to customers in a quick cycle time fashion. And we do end to end, so fab, assembly, components, and testing. And we also have a facility in Wisconsin that is geared for production. That's a very exciting new addition to our company, and I hope you guys take advantage of that. So this is what we're going to cover today uh, in our uh, webinar. You know, to make sure that you guys can minimize your signal integrity issues and get designs and systems that work right the first time. So first, the uh, basics, the definition. So propagation delay. Uh, is the time taken by a signal to propagate over a unit length of the transmission line. So you can estimate the total signal propagation time by multiplying the propagation delay by the transmission line length. So propagation delay is expressed in the time per unit length, so nanosecond or picosecond per inch. And propagation delay is directly proportional to the trace length and inversely proportional to the signal speed. So propagation delay, of course, is important. It can cause uh, data disruption in the system and it impacts, you know, overall uh, signal integrity. So the critical uh, factors are responsible for propagation delay. So picking the right material, having the right dielectric constant. If you do anything kind of greater than four, you'll definitely encounter some issues. Uh, and then, you know, you want to worry about, you need to worry about your parasitic capacitance. Uh, so it increases the capacitive load of the signal and leads to greater signal delay. And then, of course, uh, as the question poll said, uh, impedance uh, matching is important. So non-uniform impedances between the driver and the transmission line leads to signal reflections. Um, and prolonged propagation delay. And then, yeah, so signal reflections, basically. So how does the dielectric material affect the propagation delay? So signal dispersion is a phenomenon in which high-speed signals experience distortion, and it occurs when the signal uh, components travel at different speeds through a medium, and so that will increase the propagation delay. So the picking the right substrate becomes really important. So materials with inconsistent dielectric constants tend to exhibit more signal dispersion and impedance discontinuities. So higher the decay, and I guess we are saying as a team, greater than four, uh, based on data, exhibit greater signal losses. So this can negatively impact the overall performance of your system. In terms of picking the materials, uh, we tried to group some materials into common buckets. Uh, and you can take a look, you know, on the right, we've listed out some common materials that we stock on a regular basis and how they perform. So some low dispersion materials include the Rogers, the Panasonic Megatron, um, et cetera. So you can always call us to see what we have in stock. You can always call us to help you uh, select the right materials. That's definitely the first step. I am not going to read this, but here's some more information for you.
if you're interested, this is how you can manually calculate propagation delay. So manually calculating, and some of you answered that you do that, well, that's fantastic. Uh, we also have a tool that can help you quickly compute this. And, and we'll definitely go that go through that. So the difference between propagation delay and transmission delay. So propagation delay is determined by the physical length of the transmission line and the speed at which the electrical signal propagates through the medium. Whereas transmission delay is a time required to transmit a specific amount of data through a trace. To calculate the transmission delay, you need to divide the data size by the data rate. So signal content impacts the transmission delay. However, it doesn't have any effect on the propagation delay. And here's a relation between, um, you know, your characteristic impedance and propagation delay. Um, they both depend on the physical length of the transmission line and capacitance per unit length of the transmission line. And if you vary the impedance, there can be a change in the propagation delay. You know, that being said, uh, we'll go through a quick demo of our tool. I think Pranav is going to do that. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so this is our uh, impedance calculator tool. So we have our impedance calculator tool, which is uh, based on the numerical solutions of Maxwell's equation, and it renders very accurate results for um, for manufacturing as well as for the uh, your design and layout purpose. So, uh, so we have um, different structures for you, like uncoated, coated microstrip, embedded, and strip line, and also. Uh, the models like single ended differential pair we have coplanar and also without ground models and you can choose uh, whichever uh, is uh, applicable for your uh, application and once you have selected those we get a list of two uh, list of calculators um, depending on uh, um, what you have selected and how the dielectric construction is so we have a total of about 82 different models uh, which are which based on the orientation of the trace and the number of reference etc so you can check those out so once you have select uh, once you decide on uh, what's your geometry is you can click on the open button and the tool will open the that particular calculator will open so right now i have opened a, a coated microstrip single ended impedance calculator so here uh, first you'll see uh, the image of the geometry um you have a unit selection so you can either uh, by default it will be in mills but if you are working in a metric system you can choose uh, those units as well uh, you need to enter dielectric information and trace information so you need to enter like dielectric height dielectric constant as this is a coated uh, geometry you need to enter the coating parameters also uh, for trace information you need to give uh, the delta w which is difference between the top and bottom of the trace width and the trace thickness so here you can either enter a target uh, impedance or the trace width so let's say i need a 50 ohm line so i'll enter 50 and i'll say calculate w this will calculate the trace width for this 50 ohms and we have a calculated impedance and also we calculate what will be the propagation delay for this particular uh, geometry for this trace width so suppose if i change or the trace width you can just do the sorry trace width you just recalculate and it will recalculate the the calculated impedance and what is the propagation delay for this geometry for this trace width uh the units will be picoseconds per inch but like i said if you can change to uh, centimeters and the units will be picoseconds per centimeter so if you're working with metric you can uh, use uh, the metric units. So this is for a single ended. Now, if you look, we also have a differential pair. So we'll just quickly go through that as well. 
So here I have taken example of a strip line differential pair model where you need to give uh, dielectric parameters for both uh, the above the uh, the dielectric which is above and below. So H1, H2 and the di dielectric constant for the dielectric and the trace information. As this is a differential pair, you can give the separation or the trace plus separation. Now, once you calculate for the differential pair, we calculate both the odd mode propagation delay as well as the even mode propagation delay. So as you know, the differential pair, you can have uh, both the models and both the uh, types and we calculate and display both E1 and odd mode uh, propagation delay. So you can use those. We also have other calculators along with the impedance. So you can check those out as well, like signal loss, best parameters and crosstalk. So yeah, um, thank you. Oops. Uh, thanks, Parv. Yeah. Uh, let me share my screen. Hit the stop share, Parnov. Uh, yeah. You just go down to the green button, share screen, I think. <laughs> okay, thanks. So, uh, on, in this, you will, we have a few more slides and a couple more demos uh, in Altium as well. Uh, so, you know, here propagation delay depends on the dielectric constant of the PCB material. Kind of went through that. The dielectric constant of the inner layer is defined by the glass and resin of the PCB substrate. Uh, so, you know, either you as an engineer can pick that or you can let your fabricator pick the glass resin percentage. Um, outer layers involve uh, the material, the solder mask, and the air. Uh, so, uh, propagation delay, you know, in these models is shown. So this is what the table shows. Uh, so propagation delay of a circuit with multiple interconnects. So a circuit may include multiple interconnects with traces, vias, et cetera, connectors. And the sum of the individual delays of each interconnect will determine the total prop propagation delay of the circuit And here the slide goes through the relation between the critical length and the propagation delay. Uh, critical length refers to the maximum distance that a signal can travel on the board without experiencing significant signal degradation. So they're closely associated with each other. And so this slide will, you know, explores the, the relationship with, between them. Uh, here, you know, same thing. So these things are important, uh, the critical length, you know, your bandwidth and the rise time. And so, you know, we have tools that calculate all of these. And uh, I think we're running into another demo specifically to help calculate all these uh, important informations. Brian, do you want to run through yes. a demo yep. again? Okay. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, a simple calculator, which you can use to calculate uh, uh, the 3dB bandwidth and also the critical length for a particular geometry. So you have selected uncoated here. So you need to enter uh, so dielectric information, so 3.6. And uh, you can enter any one of these four parameters. So either your maximum data transfer rate, uh, fastest rise time, or your maximum frequency content or your 3db bandwidth say suppose i'm working with the 10 gigahertz and so i enter 10 and when you press calculate so we'll calculate your uh, uh, maximum data transfer rate fastest rise time and 3db bandwidth and also for this geometry we calculate what will, what will be the critical length and the wavelength and the short length uh, 
for this combination. So also you can enter other parameters, say um, data transfer rate, say five Gbps, and you can calculate and it will calculate all these parameters as also the critical length uh, as well. Okay, so thank you. This is the small tool. Yeah, we can continue. Okay. So I think you were talking a little bit about short line. So short line is a trace whose length is less than the critical length over 1.5. The length is equivalent to the maximum wavelength divided by six. And so signal delay and impedance mismatch rarely matters for these types of traces. And then here's an example of how to calculate the length of your short line, or you can use our calculator. So in this section, we're gonna learn how to compensate uh, delay differences between two signals in a net. And uh, I think we're also gonna do a demo in Altium. Uh, yeah, so just quickly, so meandering is done, you know, to match the length of traces in a net. Um, and here are some length matching tips uh, for your differential pairs. And then how to calculate, here's an example of how to calculate the minimum allowed delay in a signal net using delay tolerance. So, and of course you have to keep uh, your vias in mind. So consider the delay uh, caused by the vias. I think we're going to do a quick demo. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so let us see now uh, how to do length matching in the LTM tool. Okay. So first of all, the important thing for length matching is to identify the number of traces that will be a part of a group that will be length match. This is important so that you don't mix up between the signals or mix up uh, signals into different groups, which can result in errors in your circuit, okay? So, uh, so first of all, uh, to create groups, we go to design and we go to classes. So classes are nothing but groups in um, uh, PCB designing. So we go to net class and say right click and add class. So right now we have already created two classes. And as you can see on the left-hand side, all the nets are present. And on the right-hand side, the members of this particular class is present, which can be selected by using these options over here. So we have created two classes over here. Uh, right now, both the classes has all differential pairs, but it can be all single-ended or even the combination of differential pairs and single-ended. Uh, so now uh, after creating these classes, just say, okay, now the next thing is to uh, define the rules. Uh, so for that, go to design and then rules. So under rules, if you come to high speed, there's an option called as match lens. So now we have created three rules over here. So to create the rules, just say right click and say new rule. So there are three rules. Uh, so first of all, this one, uh, this is basically, uh, these two rules are basically because we have two classes. So here we have selected net class and the the class which we have created. Now to set the rules, there are two ways possible. One is the length units and one is the delay units. So certain length unit, we are specifying the tolerance. So tolerance is nothing but the difference between the shortest and the longest trace in a given group or even or in a given class. That is if your shortest length is 500 mils and if your tolerance is 250 mils, your longest trace cannot be more than 750 mils. So that is basically the meaning of tolerance. Normally it is, we normally follow 10 mils Right now it is 250 minutes because it was uh, the requirement of the project. So, uh, but we try to follow it to uh, 10 minutes. 
similarly that is delay units so in delay units uh, uh, same thing like uh, if suppose we are mentioning it as two picoseconds then the difference between uh, the propagation delay okay between the two uh, traces should not be more than two picoseconds okay so now uh, uh, we have created two groups because there are two classes and there's something called as group match lens so now what is this so uh, suppose we in a class we have 10 different signals then each signal will be compared with the remaining nine to check whether they fall within the tolerance limit which we have set similarly if there are 10 differential pairs each differential pair will be compared with the remaining nine differential pairs for the same uh, tolerance limit so there is also a third rule over here so this is specifically for all the differential pairs present in the design so this is uh, because every differential pair consists of two lines that is positive and the negative so it is also important to length match this positive and negative uh, lines of each differential pair so this rule is applicable for every differential pair so that is that is called inter and inter pair differential pair length matching so for that we have to select the option within differential pair length and length unit normally the tolerance is 5 minutes and in terms of delay units it would be 1 picosecond right now this is just set to 100 picosecond but it would be somewhere one picosecond. So these are the three rules which we have to define. Apart from this, we have to define something called as clearance, 3W. So if there is impedance traces, uh, even in the uh, length matching classes, each uh, trace or each differential pair should be separated by its adjacent differential pair by at least 3W spacing. We can even use 5W, but 3W is a must. So in this case, our line width is uh, uh, four minutes. So it is three into width, that is three into four minutes. So it becomes 12 minutes. So that's why we have mentioned track in track to track clearance of 12 minutes. And another important thing is track to copper, which we have mentioned as 15 minutes, which is more than the 3W, that should be fine. And custom queries, uh, we have selected all the differential pairs, but if you want to specific class, you can even do that. So after, after setting this, just say, okay. Okay. Then another important thing is to consider the propagation delay that will occur due to the wires also. So now, for example, if I click on the wire and if I go to properties, uh, there's something called as wire propagation delay op option over here. So now this will depend upon the uh, propagation delay of a signal or on a given trace that will depend upon the overall stack up. Uh, so if you know that value propagation delay, then you have to multiply the width or thickness of the wire that is either in uh, through wire, it will be the thickness of the PCB. So if you multiply that value, you will get this propagation delay, which you can add over here. And also we can add the delay of the uh, pads. So suppose uh, there are some data sheet uh, recommendations that internally so-and-so delay will be uh, present for this particular pad, that, which does, that also can be specified over here in properties. You can see this propagation delay option is there. And similar this pin package length. So these are the two options which we can use in LTM. So now let us see how to do the length matching. So now for length matching, I go to go to route and say differential interactive differential pair length unit. Okay. Uh, before that, uh, say open the panels and PCB. So you will get this option, and you can see there is there are these two classes which we had created. So, and here you can see all the traces. Right now, there is no colors to each of the trace because all of them are length match. So now let us delete one of this. Okay, now you can see this, these two are uh, orange over here. So to length match this, go to route and select interact to differential length tuning. Differential because these are differential pairs. If, if it was single ended, we have to select interact to length tuning. So select this. Then we have to set the rule. So now the radius over here, whenever we uh, bend this, uh, so during the mentoring, so the radius should be at least equal to 3W, that is three into our trace width is four minutes, that is 12 minutes. But even we can keep it 5W also. So let us keep it for now 12 minutes. Okay, and uh, amplitude can be fine as per your requirement. So after that, click on the differential pair and just drag this until the bar down there becomes red okay so once it is red click over here and now you can see on the left hand side just two which was orange is gone now which means it is now length match similarly as i said there is also length matching between within a differential pair that is between the positive and negative traits so now 
uh, the line on the top is the positive, which is uh, smaller in length compared to the line on the bottom, which is negative. So that's why there are three bumps over here too, so that both the traces are matched. So why three? Because, uh, let me delete this first. So once I delete it, now you can see there is an error over here. So now to remove this, you have to do the same thing. Go to route. Now select interact to length tuning because we are only length tuning single trees. Simil same way, there is this uh, 3W. Here, try to maintain 3W only. Okay, so which is uh, 12 means. And in this case, the amplitude becomes important because you cannot just keep increasing the uh, uh, width of single line in a differential pair. So the rule is that after uh, uh, making this bump, the overall spacing should be uh, no, nominally, it should be two times spacing, spacing of the differential pair. It should be two times that. But uh, sometimes it is not possible. Then you can go slightly above. You can try to maintain between 3S and 2S. So click on this. And same way, drag this and click over here. So now you can see on the left hand side, the red and the orange is gone, which means now it is completely length matched. So this is how you do the uh, differential pair within a differential pair length matching. So now, uh, as we said, there is also something called as um, uh, a spacing between adjacent pairs. Now, suppose these are the two adjacent uh, differential pairs. So if I move this, you can see the <coughs> wide boundary, right? That is basically the rule of 2L, 2L mean spacing, that is 3W spacing. So it basically tells us that you cannot go beyond this boundary. So that is also important in case of uh, length matching or in case of routing impedance traces. Yeah, thank you. Hope this will be useful. Uh, over to you, sir. Thank you. Um, share my screen. Okay, so just a couple of points, and then we're we're pretty much done uh, and ready for questions and answers, or I should say more questions and answers. But basically, um, you know, you want to incorporate, you know, three W to five W separation between controlled impedance traces. Uh, you want to consider pin package delays caused uh, due to inside the component during the length tuning. So you can always check the package's internal length on the data sheet and define the same in the EDA tool. And then a couple of points on return path and why that's important for controlling the delay. So return paths provide a low impedance line to the high speed signals. It's very crucial for a signal to complete the loop uh, to maintain the signal integrity. So any uh, you know, splits or gaps in the return path can cause impedance mismatches and increase signal delay. So a larger return loop can induce uh, parasitic inductance as well, which can delay the return current flow and cause propagation delay. So try to always implement a solid plane underneath the trace uh, through the entire length uh, with, no, um, with no gaps. And if you don't have a solid plane, um, use a thick return trace where the trace thickness is three times the dielectric height. That, that's it for the presentation. Uh, we have all these references for you guys to learn from. And we and like I was saying before, we also have our signal integrity experts on the line right now. If you have questions, uh, we'll be happy to address them. Great. So we have uh, Atar Mittal with us. He's uh, the general manager of our design division, and uh, he's basically an expert on everything high speed, propagation delays, signal integrity, control impedance. So please ask your questions and uh, Atar will answer. Um, Atar, if you can check the Q&A, we have a few questions. Uh, Lucy, why don't you read him the questions and then he can unmute and answer. Yes, so the first question is, can this also be done using X signals? That's an Altium feature. You can, you can skip that. 
Okay, what rule of thumb did you use to select the trace to length match? Abhishek, you should be able to answer that. Uh, I don't know uh, yeah. the question completely, but uh, yeah, Abhishek, if you understand, then please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, what rule of thumb did you use to select the trace to length matching? So I assume uh, how did we uh, uh, how did we select the tolerance value uh, for the length matching? Uh, that's what I understand from this question. Uh, so basically, uh, the thumb rule is uh, we normally try to go with uh, ten means uh, tolerance. Um, whatever what may, may be the uh, especially with respect to the GDS. Okay, so it, if it is up to two gigahertz of signals, we normally try to keep it ten mils of tolerance uh, within single-ended and differential pairs. And as I said, within a differential pair, that is between the positive and negative, it should be five mils. But then um, there are uh, applications which has their own uh, uh, tolerance requirements. So if that is uh, there and you know it, then you can change it. But I would I would recommend go with the ten mils tolerance. There is one comment I like to make. Basically, the requirement in any matching is the time required, time matching, the entire propagation delay. The TPD that we talked about during this presentation is basically propagation delay per unit length. Okay. So when uh, I think there was somewhere mentioned that if you have several propagation delays in a you know interconnected network and all, you just add TPDs for that. That is not correct. What you have to do is TPD multiplied by the length for which that TPD value is applicable. So TPD i multiplied by l i and sum over all the i sections. That is what the total propagation delay is. So when we say propagation delay is TPD. No, TPD is not propagation delay. TPD is propagation delay per unit length. That is, and that is why the units which, uh, you know, in the, uh, you know, detailed accurate calculator that was shown was picosecond per inch or picosecond per centimeter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that is, so, so when we say length matching, we generally, the, let us say there are a, a set of group, group of signals, whether single-ended or double-ended, uh, uh, differential pairs. They are supposed to go from, let us say, a microprocessor to a memory or memory to a microprocessor or one microprocessor to another microprocessor. So there is a certain requirement, depending upon the speed of data transfer that is taking place over that set of signal lines, as to how much, let us say, the you know, synchronization, from a synchronization point of view, how much is the maximum amount of tolerance in terms of reach, all those signals reaching at the same time at the receiver is. So that time difference has to be, is basically, there are two ways to handle it. If, all these signals are on the same layer, then you know that the propagation delay per unit length is the same on that layer, if the geometries are the same of all those things. And I'm assuming geometries of those traces or their spacings is the same. Now, if that is the same, then basically the overall propagation delay would be directly proportional to the length. And that is why we call generally Historically, we have been calling it length matching, but through the length matching, we are basically trying to do time matching, delay matching. Okay. So that is one of it. Now, if a set of signals are going from one place to you know one layer to the another, naturally their propagation delays are not going to be the same. Propagation delay per unit length is not going to be the same uh, on, on both of those. So therefore, that point has to be taken place. I have a feeling that in an ECAT tool like Altium, that is internally taken care of. If you specify the propagation delay value, a TPD value that is propagation delay per unit length value. And basically when it does length matching, it takes care of all those kinds of things. 
Okay. Thank you, Ata. Someone was asking about our tools. So I just want to say that, yes, uh, you can use them for free. They are available on our website. So you just go to ProExpress.com and you can see in the menu designers tools. We have 15 tools. So please use them. They're all free. There is one more point I'd like to say. The impedance a calculator and in which there were inherent, uh, you know, propagation delay per unit length values calculated in a very accurate manner as per the various geometries of the dielectric and the transmission lines. That is a very accurate calculator because it's based on, you know, uh, basically numerical analysis of actual differential equation. The formulas that were given in the beginning they are approximate calculators, but they are a good guideline to start with. Like, for example, we know that the velocity of light in vacuum or velocity of velocity of electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic signals in vacuum is, you know, is a fundamental constant of nature, 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Or roughly, to translate it in terms of PCB, it is roughly about 12 inches per nanosecond. Now, if the electromagnetic waves are traveling in a homogeneous dielectric of a dielectric constant ER, then basically, as everyone possibly knows, that the velocity will be basically reduced by a factor of 1 divided by square root of ER. Now, this is so far as homogeneous material is concerned. But PCB transmission lines and the dielectrics, these are not homogeneous structures. These are very complex structures. So it is not possible to, let us say, accurately determine just by the dimensions alone what would be the effective dielectric constant. And that is the need for the numerical solution of differential equations, which is shown in the impedance calculator. Yes. Just wanted to make that comment so that, you know. And propagation delay per unit length is nothing but one divided by the velocity. Velocity is length per unit time. And propagation delay is time per unit length. You can see the correlation between the two. One is the reciprocal of the other. So effectively the matter is that if the dielectric constant is high, the propagation delay per unit length will be more. And so if you want a very less propagation delay, you have to choose a dielectric material which has a lesser value. Thank you. Thank you, Ata. Okay, I think we're done with the questions. Uh, thank, you, thank you everyone for attending. And I will send you the slides and recording tomorrow. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, Ata. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Abhishek. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Lucy. Bye. Yeah. Bye, Lucy. Thank you, everyone.